yeah Divine dialect I-U-I-C It's the payback Hey yo, a lot of stains on our name Throughout the time that passed But not a lot of grains left in that hourglass We used to rock fellas Hit dames then dash Now through the rock we built a nation Waiting on Jehovah's wrath Reporting live from the five boroughs We gon' burn them bogeys This ain't a new port or Marlboro And our youth they called us nigga team When they the cancer But they dead, I don't talk to them Ain't no necromancer Like A-Rod, them Yankees are basemen No cap, them Yankees gon' say why in the end Yeah, it's been a while since we seen Jerusalem We miss our mother Them nations jumped us We coming back with our big brother That'll more than even the odds They try to bombard us with fraud But in this spiritual war You grip a sword and draw To spare chili, put a hole in one of them birdies We treat the eagle like a bogey when we up the paw Yeah Hey, shalom brothers, shalom sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is. That's right. It is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I often love to do, before I read the shout out letters and donations, I love to cover a very small but important topic. And today is Pope Francis Day. I know you thought I wouldn't get to Catholic Church, but I have not forgotten you. God has not forgotten about the Catholic Church and all the evil it has done. Now, is this so much against Pope Francis himself, whose real name is Jorge Mario Bergoglio? Jorge Mario Bergoglio. And a lot of you Northern Kingdom brothers and sisters, you, you Latin Americans, you really love the, oh, uh, el papa mi gente, el papa mi gente, el stupido, el papa, el diablo. The Pope is not your people. Just because he can speak Spanish does not make him your people. You foolish Latin Americans. I don't know how stupid some of you can be. Now, let me take it down a notch. Let me just take it down a notch. So today I'm going to show you a couple of clips. I need y'all to pay close attention. Pay close attention. I'm going to show you some news. And I, I mentioned before in another uh, lesson how the church, or especially the black church, oh, God. They can never see their own oppression in the Bible. Neither can they see the United States of America in the Bible. But you know what they can always see? Excuse me. You can always see the Roman Catholic Church. Catholic Church, Catholic Church, Catholic Church. I'm about you Protestant blacks too. Because you fall right in line with those Protestant whites. And those Protestant whites can't stand your guts. Ask Urban Apologetics. Ask them. They're not even called, the, they're not even called apologists. They're the urban ones. You know, the Negroes, the fake ones, <laughs> ask them. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to read some, go over some scriptures with you to verify my, my uh, point that I'm bringing out. I'm going to go into some history. Um, I'm also going to read my notes, okay? I got, a, I got quite a bit of notes. So one news clip I'm going to show you deals with Pennsylvania and how, how there's about 300 priests that have abused children okay and and it only became popular it's not like this has just occurred listen good to what i'm about to say it's not that this has just occurred the pedophilia in the catholic church the reason it has recently become or being put out in the media is because caucasian children of lobbyists caucasian children of prominent white folks have been caught up Booty bangs, raped, and pillaged. That's the only reason. Because always prior to that, it was black and Hispanics, Native American, and don't nobody give a damn about our people. Don't nobody give a hoot about God's people. But the Lord does. And that's why today's lesson is coming up. So, in Pennsylvania, you got six dioceses, okay? And you got 3,160 archdioceses worldwide. And those are just... Archdiocese is a larger district, and a diocese itself is a smaller district, okay? And you have many of them from, they're located from um, Boston to Ireland, Australia, California, Chile. Chile, that's where Pope Francis is from, I believe. Yeah, 
Yeah, Chile, Chile. In widespread child abuse and systematic cover-up. Listen good, the goal has never been to protect black children. And when I say black children, I'm including you Latin Americans, although you, me no negro, you no negro, shut the hell up. You Latin Americans that, that, you, that know you are part of us, you Native American Indians that know that you're part of us, because our blood is in you, okay? But the rest of you who, who, who want to be white, you stay with those folks, suffer and die. So listen, they want to avoid scandal, so they paid off the families of the white uh, children. That's what they do, okay? And the money is not an obstacle to them. The money is no obstacle. Uh, priests, when they're about to be found out before it becomes scandalous in the news, you know what the Pope does? Whether it's Pope Francis of today or any of the, what's the most famous Pope Earl? Pope John Paul II, I believe he's more famous than any of them. But anyway, what they do, and he turned a blind ear, he didn't hit a blind ear, a deaf ear to all the child abuse. What they do is they move you from state to, not you, but move the popes, or not move the popes, excuse me, you bear with me. They move the priests who are guilty of child molestation from parish to parish, city to city, state to state, or country to country, or from one continent to another continent. Generally, to a third world country, they'll send these pedophile priests. Listen good to what I'm saying. I'm not making stuff up, all right? Um, when they go to these third world countries, these priests have um, utmost power. The locals have no voice. Even when they, the locals go to complain to the law enforcement agencies, you have no power, no voice. Church, the church pressures the authorities and actively can will also often discredit victims, victims of Caucasians. That, listen to what I'm saying. Blacks and Latinos, they don't give a damn about y'all. They ain't thinking about paying y'all off or nothing. It's the Caucasian families whose children get molested. They pay them off. And sometimes if that don't work, they victimize the families. They try to discredit them in the media. Um, in the book of James, let me show you something. James chapter 5, verse 16. It reads, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a, of a righteous man availeth much. Now, the Roman Catholic Church has many, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Many heretical teachings. But one of the main heretical teachings that they have that has caused them or allowed them to reign supreme on the earth is the damn confessional booth. There was a movie that Spike Lee did called Inside Man with Denzel Washington. And what was the white woman's name? Uh, Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster, the white woman, she was able to get whatever she wants. I'm giving an analogy. I'm giving an analogy. No, uh, no prominent authority could turn her down. Why? Because she had all their secrets. They hated her guts, but because she had their secrets, they had to do what she wanted. I said all that to explain the confessional booths, booths that the Catholic Church has. Many people, powerful, uh, rich, even famous, have become Catholic Christians. They go to the confessional booth and confess their faults. And the Catholic Church has all those things recorded, whether on paper or on a device, but they have it recorded. And they use your confessions against you. So when they call and they, they need you to do A, B, or C, you are obliged to do it. Not because you believe in Jesus, because no, you don't. It's because you don't want your secret to get out. That's the purpose of the confessional booths. Then they say, say five Hail Marys and thank you, Jesus, and call me in the morning. And your simple behind goes and does it. Um, the Pope often conceals the name. I'm going to show you a clip and show you how the Pope, whether, whatever Pope it is, today I'm using, uh, I'm talking about Pope Francis, but it goes not just for him, but for any of them previous to him and any that may come after. If there is a 
if there is a lawsuit, the written documents in said suit, the names of the priests are redacted. You know, they get a black marker and cross it out. You'll see it in today's lesson. As I go through, I'm going to show you the actual clip where they show you the names of these pedophiles redacted, meaning blocked out with a black marker. Uh, and the courts have no power to undo that. So I'm showing you that even today, the Roman Catholic Church has power even here in the United States of America, America, which is seemingly or allegedly a Protestant Christian country. Oh, how wrong you are. Oh, contraire, mon frère. Um, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. So I need you to bear with me. Bear with me. The Roman Catholic Church is a den of iniquity. In the Bible, she's called, you will find the Roman Catholic Church under various names. It goes by the name of Image of the Beast. It goes by the name of the False Prophet. And, listen good, Mother of Harlots. Okay? Let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Let's go to Revelation 13. I'm going to try not to be too long-winded, but you know, I got to roll how the Spirit wants me to roll. Revelation chapter 13. And I'm going to read verse 5 through 8. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. I'm talking about three and a half years. Okay. Or 350 years. It's a metaphor. What are some of the blasphemies that the Roman Catholic Church, which are all Edomites, by the way. I don't care if they got a little a dusty Hamite in there. They are primarily um, Edomites, descendants of Esau. And I'm going to show you that too. So. The blasphemies. The Pope is called the vicar of Christ or the substitute or replacement of Christ on earth. That's blasphemy, okay? That is blasphemy. There's nobody who is the, um, the replacement of Christ on earth. That is the same thing that Antiochus Epiphanes did during the time of the Greeks. Look up the word Epiphanes. It means God manifest on earth. That is the same thing the Pope did. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you a relation to the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church and Antiochus Epiphanes. I, it, it's not in my notes, but it just popped in my head. So y'all bear with me. Come with me over to 1st Maccabees. And I don't give a, a hoot. If you dumb Christians say, that's not canon, that's not canon. Don't nobody give a damn what you think or say. We're the Israelites, brother. <laughs> brother. We are the Israelites, you daggone. I want to use another word, but I can't say it. We are the Israelites. We say what's canon and what's not canon. Not you Edomites. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus, or Antiochus, as Antiochus Epiphanes, God manifest on earth, wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Hmm. Now, this is going to sound strange what I'm about to say. It's not strange, but it's true. What we're about to read describes both Christianity and democracy. Those are opposite sides of the same coin. It's the same thing. Let me read it again. Verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Does the Roman Catholic Church have idols? You better believe it does. Just like the ancient Greeks did, so do the Catholics today. Do they profane God's seventh day Sabbath? Oh, you better believe they do. They've instituted a new Sabbath, the first day of the week. Watch this, verse 44. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days. What does it mean, profane the Sabbaths and festival days? 
During the time of the Greeks, they made laws outlawing God's Sabbath day. And they established new festival days. Does the Catholic Church profane the seven-day Sabbath? Yes, they ordain Sunday, the first day of the week, as a new Sabbath. How do they profane God's festival days? They change all the ordinances, okay? They said, let's give them Easter, Christmas, Mother's Day, New Year's Eve. What else do they do? Uh, things of that nature. What about democracy under the United States of America? Same thing, same thing. They push those same festivals. New Year's Eve, those are national holidays. Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, 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 Mother's Day. Uh, they got President's Day, Memorial Day. They do the same exact thing, and they're all Edomites. I'm going to keep saying that through this lesson. They're all Edomites. E-D-O-M, Edom, means red. Watch this. Verse 46, and pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Have we been polluted? Well, you better believe we have. Verse 47, set up altars, groves, chapels of idols, sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. In the church, do they have, in the church, do they have swine festivals? Now, you black people know what I'm talking about. Every cotton picking Sunday, we'd have a, a food festival of chitlins. Collard greens with chitlins in it, pig's feet and hog jowls. You brothers and sisters know what I'm talking about, sitting up in your Baptist church. Oh, we're not Catholic, we're Baptist, you filthy. You know what I'm talking about. I lived it, so I know what I'm saying is real. Let's read on. Verse 48, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised. Is circumcision pushed in the Catholic or Protestant church? Mm -mm. They say, no, no not, not necessary, don't do it. And make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. To the end, that they might forget the law. Forget whose law? God's law. And change all the ordinances. That's what they've done in the Roman Catholic Church under Christianity. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should Die. They killed you. The Greeks killed you if you did not follow their customs and laws and rules. Did the Roman Catholic Church do that? Oh, I'm going to show you in today's lesson. You have no idea the diabolicalness. I don't know if that's the word, but I like the way it sounds. You have no idea of the diabolical uh, 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 handlings of the Catholic Church, the things they have done to our people. You have no idea, many of you. Now, where was I at? I was going to Revelation 13, verse 5. That's where I was. Revelation 13, verse 5. It reads, And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Meaning what? They blaspheme everything this Bible says. They blaspheme, like, think about the Sistine Chapel that, uh, who did it? Michelangelo painted. Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel. What does he paint at the top on the ceilings? They show you God the Father as an Edomite, a Caucasian man, reaching out to create an Edomite man that you assume is Adam. And he gives him the spark of life and he touches his finger. E.T. go home. The hell is this? You see it in the Sistine Chapel. They show you another blasphemous thing. The son of God they portray as a Caucasian man whose name is really um, Caesar Borgia, the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. And by the way, the God that they show in the Sistine Chapel, who did Michelangelo use for the image of God? Hmm? Pope Alexander VI of Rome, who's really um, Rodrigo Borgia. He's the father of Caesar Borgia, who's portrayed or painted as Jesus Christ. I hope I'm, I hope I'm making myself plain to you. So the image for God the Father in the Sistine Chapel is 
Pope Alexander VI of Rome, whose name was Rodrigo Borgia. Because you know when you become Pope, you got to choose a Christian name. He had a son named Caesar Borgia. Leonardo da Vinci, who was prior to Michelangelo, used Caesar's image as the new Renaissance image of Jesus Christ. Then you see the, the, the Last Supper. You got Caesar Borgia in the middle like this. Oh, You got uh, Caesar's sister Lucretia twice in the painting. You got um, his dad, Pope Alexander VI, about two or three times. You've seen with the big white beard several times in the painting. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Because in the Bible, all the Israelites have and always will be black people. And uh, yes, I'm talking about you dumb Latin people too. I oh, mean, no, no, shut the hell up. Now, <laughs> verse seven, watch this. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. This white man made war with the saints. Who are the saints? Because I know right now there's a dumb urban apologist. Anybody that believes in Jesus is a saint. That's a lie. Psalms 148, verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. So who are the saints? The children of Israel. Hmm. And it was given unto him, the him here is the white man. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given unto him, given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Let's pause there. Who issued papal bulls or edicts or decrees instituting slavery and domination? The Roman Catholic Church. I'm going to show you that too. From um, throughout the 1400s. I just worded it like that. I'll get more specific later on. And they gave those edicts beginning with Portugal, followed by Spain. They gave them dominion over Africa and the Americas. So that's what it means. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. They overcame us. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Who is everybody worshiping? When you think about God and Christ and the angels, who do people think of? The so-called white man. God, white man, and you hear the, the, the music, oh, Jesus, white man, hallelujah, 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 the angels, white people, the Jews, Israelites, white people, that's what they have done and have continued to do today. Now, what verse did I read down to? And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, watch this. I ain't finished yet. I'm going to jump down to the same chapter, verse 14 and 15. And deceive of them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, talking about fire from heaven, Adam bomb. I'm just getting to the point. Which you have power to do in the sight of the beast, other European nations, saying to them that dwell on the earth, here it comes, that they should make an image to the beast, an image that represents White supremacy, an image to the beast. What image is that? Back up to verse seven, because I know you forgot. Verse eight, I know you forgot. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Worship him. Back down to verse 14. Saying to them that dwell on earth that they should make an image to the beast. What image was made that people worship today? That image of Jesus that's in many of your homes and most of your churches. You understand what I'm saying? That's the image that people worship, which had the wound by a sword and did live. What does that mean? Which had the wound by a sword and did live. Rome fell in 193 AD, but they came back in power during the time of Renaissance. Now I'm not saying there was not bits and pieces of Roman Catholicism throughout the dark ages. Oh yes, there was, but they came in full force, full power, during the time of the Renaissance. That's what it means, which had the wound by his sword and did live. They came back in power again during the time of the Renaissance. 
and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Whose life did they give that image that the world worships? They gave it the life of Christ. They, so think about it. Understand what I'm saying. Leonardo da Vinci, which was hired by the Pope, took Caesar Borgia as the image of Jesus Christ, painted him and said, his life is now the life of Christ. And now people fall down and worship and had power and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. How does that image speak? When the conquistadors went forth, they had the image of Caesar Borgia as Jesus conquered in the name, in the sign of the cross. Now today you have comic books, for example, Jehovah Witness comic books. You have movies, for example, you got the, what was that guy's name? Mel, not Mel Brooks, Mel, Mel Gibson did a movie called The Passion of the Christ. And not just him, I'm just using it as an example, but what they do, they look for actors, Edomite, Caucasian actors that look similar to Caesar Borgia. And all of you believe that that's Christ. Let's read it again. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, so that image speaks in their movies, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. They killed us if we did not fall down and accept Christianity under the Roman Catholic Church. They slaughtered us. That's what the Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition, listen good, listen good. It was about the destruction of the Israelites. When you go back up, verse 7, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. They overcame us. Whichever one of us refused to worship the white image of the beast, that image of Jesus, we suffered the Inquisition. They burned us alive at the stake. They, 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 they drowned us. They, they, they subjected us to terrible and the most cruel tortures imaginable. And it began in Spain and Portugal. I've gone over that many times. Many of us fled to the shores of Western Africa. And when they chased us down from, from Spain and Portugal to Africa, many of us even fled over to the Americas. They followed us there. Hence, Columbus was even there in 1492 where he discovered, discovered the Indies the Canary Islands and all of that. Understand, understand what I'm saying, okay? The Catholic Church, Christianity. And you'll have many Israelites, we will not, many times we don't, we don't separate the Catholic Church from Christianity. Why? Because you Protestants, you like to try to make a separation between the Catholic Church and Christianity, but there is no difference. It's one and the same, okay? What the Catholic Church started, the Protestants continued and America finished. You're all Edomites. Listen good, listen good. So where was I at? Where was I at? Okay, that was verse 15. Now watch this. I'm going to Revelation 16, verse, um, I'll start at 12. I'm going to read 12 down to 14. And a sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So the Euphrates is being dried up, whether through heat or whether through dams set up by other nations. The way of the kings of the east is being prepared for war and desolation. Watch. Verse uh, 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. That's political policies. And out of the mouth of the beast. That's economic uh, uh, injustice. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. That is Christianity. Or as some of you want to say, the Roman Catholic Church. 
Why do people fight wars? They fight wars for three reasons. Political reasons, economic reasons, and religious reasons. Those are the three things that nations war about. It was true in the past. It is going to be true now. Let's read it again. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. That's the Catholic church. That's Christianity, that false prophet right there. Verse 14, for they are the spirits of devils. Let me say that again. For they are the spirit, spirits of devils. You don't like to think that the Roman Catholic church or Christianity is a spirit of devils. I'm going to show you that in another scripture too. Write this down. That spirit of devils here that we just read about in verse 14 is the same spirit of devils. I'm going I'm to I'm just, I'm going to touch on it so you can see the correlation. Watch this. Watch this. First Timothy four verse one. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Roman Catholicism is one of those devils. I'm going to show it a little bit, but let's go back to Revelation 16. Uh, verse 14, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God almighty. Let's go to Revelation 19. In verse 19, I'll start there. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, that's Christ, and against his army, that's the angels. Verse 20, and the beast was taken, meaning overcome by Christ, and with him the false prophet that wrote miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. That's that white image of the Jesus. These both were cast alive uh, into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. All of America is going to become that lake of fire. This place is going to be destroyed. And the entire church system and political system is going down with it. So, 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 so. Now watch this. Listen good. Listen good. The Roman Catholic Church has influenced world history. What, see, I, I want to just say Christianity, but some of you are just so lost and confused. I'll, I think for this lesson, I'll be more specific because I am going to touch on Protestants later on today. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church has influenced world history more than any other religion, more than Islam itself. Islam falls second to the Catholic Church or to the Christian religion. It has exercised its power throughout the Middle Ages, reigning over kings and queens. Remember, there was a time when the Pope reigned supreme over any king or queen. That's why those papal bulls that the popes wrote or decreed was written to the kings and queens. For example, one was written to King Alfonso V of Portugal. Another was written to, the, to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain. They had no say. The Pope reigned over them. Okay, so the Catholic Church reigned over kings, queens, crusaders, and conquistadors. They control the militaries, okay, and Jesuit priests that travel to other countries and continents to spread Christianity, to spread Christianity. You know, I'm, I'm just going to say it like that because that's what it is. That's what it is. It wasn't until the formation of the United States when, it con when the Constitution and the First Amendment was put in place that they tried to make a separation of church and state. That's why in the Bible, what many of you don't realize, you'll have uh, Babylon the Great and then you'll have the Mother of Harlots. And it's all written on the forehead of a woman. It represents the same thing, but one dictates uh, political reign, the other dictates religious reign. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I hope you do. I want to show you a, a small video regarding the separation of church and state. Almost everyone has heard of the doctrine of the separation of church and state. 
Most Americans believe that it's in the United States Constitution, but there is no such phrase in the Constitution, and there never was, for a simple reason. The Founding Fathers never intended for church and state to be completely separate. They saw religion, specifically religions based on the Bible, as indispensable to the moral foundation of the nation they were creating. So where does that phrase come from? It comes from one brief letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote to the Danbury Baptist Association in 1802, at the end of a very long sentence in which Jefferson affirms his conviction that religious belief should be a private matter and that the government should not interfere with such matters. He uses the phrase, building a wall of separation between church and state. And that's where the phrase lived, undisturbed, lost in Jefferson's voluminous correspondence for almost 150 years. But more on that in a moment. First, let's discuss what the Constitution actually does say about religion and its role in public life. The answer is found in the First Amendment to the Constitution. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It's plain what those words mean. The federal government could not establish a national religion, the common practice in Europe. The United States was going to be different. Americans would be free to follow the religion of their choice. When James Madison first proposed what eventually became the First Amendment, his original wording was that no religion shall be established by Congress. But that language was later modified after it was pointed out that this might be taken to mean that the government, including the state governments, had no interest in religion at all. The founders did not want this. As George Washington said in his farewell address, religion and morality are indispensable supports of our political prosperity. Washington's view remained the nation's view throughout the 19th century and into the 20th, but that changed in 1947. In that year, in the case of Everson versus Board of Education, the Supreme Court ruled in a five to four decision that under the First Amendment, neither a state nor the federal government could pass laws which aid one religion, aid all religions, or prefer one religion over another. For the first time in American history, the First Amendment was not only about the prohibition of establishing a national religion, it was also about not giving any encouragement to any religion. So what the Roman Catholic Church started, the United States of America will finish it. Okay, and just as all Christians choose never to see America in the Bible, they choose never to see the oppression of the black and Latino or the Indians in the Bible. That's a choice you've all made and you're all going to be judged behind it. Many Protestant Christians try to separate themselves from the Catholic Church, as I've said before, but you belong to her. I'm going to read Revelation 17:5. Mm. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is the United States of America. This whole vision that John is seeing is a similitude, a parable, a metaphor, oh, an allegory. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great. What Protestants tend to do, they say, oh, Babylon is the Roman Catholic Church. mm, -mm. Babylon is the United States of America, okay? Then it says, the mother of Hollis. Now you can say the mother of Hollis is the Roman Catholic Church and abominations of the earth. Understand, I'm going to show you an example of that thing right there. She's called the mother. Now, it's interesting. Do you know the Pope? Well, he's the head of the Catholic Church. He's also the pastor of a specific congregation. It's a church in Rome. It's called the a Lateran Church. And here is a plaque that you find today that is in marble on the Lateran Church in Rome where the post, Pope is the pastor. Uh, it's like, you know, um, you know I, I direct amazing facts, but I also pastor a church. Well, the Pope is the head of the Catholic Church, but he also has a congregation. This is the church. And it says here, this is the Latin translation, the sacred Lateran mother and head of all churches of the city and the world. So they claim the title mother. All right, here's the next one. For number D, it says she has harlot daughters who also are fallen. 
Revelation chapter 14, it says, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And she's said to be the mother of harlots. So if a woman represents a church, that which would constitute her daughters would be those churches that are holding to the teachings and the doctrines of the mother church. And so we're talking not only about uh, the papal power, but we're also talking about those Protestant churches that are holding to the same doctrines and teachings that originate from the mother church and are not found in the Bible. Yeah, if you have a, uh, a daughter is going to usually resemble her mother, maybe not completely because the father hopefully had some influence, uh, but in the same way the Protestant churches, though they came out and tried to come back to the Bible, they still, as one pastor put it, they still had in their bosom relics of popery. They still clung to a lot of those foundational teachings. Now I've been saying it all through today's lesson. Protestants try to separate themselves from the Roman Catholic Church. They, are, they all fall under Christianity. They all fall under white supremacy. Let me show you the tree of white supremacy in a religious connotation. I'm going to show the Roman Catholic Church. You see this tree, the Roman Catholic. Under it, you see white supremacy. From the Roman Catholic Church, which is the mother, I want you all to look at, let's look at the roots. You got the Eastern and Western Orthodox. I'm going from left, from left to right. Eastern and Western Orthodox churches, Jehovah Witness, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Charismatic. You got the World Council of Churches. You got born again Christians. You got Methodists, Episcopalian, Mormons, Evangelicals, Pentecostals, Baptists, Seventh-day Adventists. Protestants, Anglicans, Calvinists, okay? I want you all, the, the Roman Catholic Church is all your mothers because what were some of the things you took from the Catholic Church? You took the white, you took a white God with you. You took the white Jesus with you. You took the white angels with you. You took white supremacy with you. You took December 25th as the birth of Jesus with you. You took um, uh, uh, the Virgin Mary with you. You took, this, I said December 25th, you took Easter with you. Oh, he resurrected Easter Sunday. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, what else? Uh, you took um, Mother's Day with you. That's what you, you took Sunday worship with you. So you are the children of the mother of harlots. Let's go back to Revelation 17, 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. What does that mean, the abominations of the earth? I'm going to show an abomination. Leviticus 18. Now, and the abomination covers a lot of things, but I'm going to hit on one thing specific. Besides just the changing of the color of God in Christ, the angels and Israelites. I'm going to show you this. Watch this. Leviticus 18, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Is the Roman Catholic Church guilty of that abomination? Let's take a look at this. A diocese priest, Thomas Skotek, raped a young girl, got her pregnant, and then that priest arranged for an abortion. Bishop James Timlin, expressed his feelings in a letter. He wrote, this is a very difficult time in your life and I realize how upset you are. I too share your grief. Except the bishop's letter was not for the girl. The bishop wrote that letter to the rapist. To make it easier to target their victims, the priest gave their favored boys gifts, gold crosses to wear as necklaces. The crosses were markings of which boys had been groomed for abuse. The report also describes a priest who quit after being the subject of many child abuse complaints, but he asked for and received, according to this report, a letter of recommendation for work at Disneyland. The grand jury found evidence that over 300 priests had sexually abused more than 1,000 victims, and the church had systematically attempted to cover it up. The grand jury reports the truth is bishops and other Catholic church leaders covered up the crimes and obstructed justice in order to avoid scandal and that the same leaders persuaded victims not to report the abuse and police officers not to investigate the abuse. Case after case, the report says, church leaders maintained a circle of silence. And for a time, some of the diocese sought to prevent the entire report from ever 
seeing the light of day. In effect, they wanted to cover up the cover up. They sought to do the same thing that senior church leaders in the diocese we investigated have done for decades. Bury the sexual abuse by priests upon children and cover it up forever. Pennsylvania is not a, a, a unique case. Yeah. It's all over the US, all over the world. I'm here in Chile where the Cardinal Archbishop of the capital city of Santiago tomorrow is going to testify in front of um, the jury as a target witness of cover-up. Mm -hmm. So it's all over the world, yes. it's horrific. The abuse in Boston extended over six decades, involving over 230 priests and more than 750 victims. It now appears that the church in Kerala is having its own spotlight moment of the sexual abuse of women and also of minors by priests. Over the past 35 years, 4,444 victims have come forward to allege some form of child sexual abuse. Those victims identified 1,880 male and female perpetrators, including priests, religious sisters, and religious brothers, plus another 500 people unidentified. Nearly 80 Catholic clergy across Chile have been accused of sexually abusing minors over the last several decades. He handles up to 60 cases at a time and says it's the tip of the iceberg because bishops can investigate cases in their own diocese without bringing them to his tribunal. There are 82 jurisdictions in the Philippines, 82. And supposing they'll send the cases all here, I might drown. In early 2013, the Archdiocese of Los Angeles released thousands of pages revealing that in the 1980s, Cardinal Mahoney and a top aide tried to shield admitted sex abusers from law enforcement. We acted very appropriately with uh, many times removal from ministry totally and completely. Did you ever move priests quietly to another that wasn't, that wasn't our, our process. But according to the grand jury, in 1991, Worrell reassigned an accused priest, Ernest Payone, to the Reno Diocese. In 1995, he returned George Zerwas, who the report says was a member of a pedophile ring, to ministry. Worrell even presided over Zerwas' funeral. He also approved monthly sustenance payments of up to $1,000 to Richard Zula, also a member of the pedophile ring after Zula's release from prison. The Catholic Church has allowed priests accused of sexually abusing children in the United States and Europe to escape their past by moving to parishes in poor, remote corners of the developing world. This despite ongoing pledges from a new pope to clean up the church's record on abuse scandals. All but one of the men we found continue to work as priests, enjoying the privilege, respect and unfettered access to young people that comes with being a member of the clergy. Imelda claims two church members then paid her $150 to keep silent. The church paid Deneff compensation in return for his silence. The boys were given money. $9,000 to not press charges. Jose Andres Murillo, now 43, claimed Father Caradima sexually abused him in the 1990s while he trained to become a priest. He says many Chileans initially refused to believe the allegations. How were you treated? What were, what were you called? We, we were or gays or, or um, enemies of the church or trying to destroy the, the, um, the, the moral and the ethics of our country. It was very, very, very hard. And he had seven barristers there questioning me and telling me I was telling lies when I told him that I got raped of a Saturday, got a merciful beating after it, and then stopped. he came along the following morning and put Holy Communion in my mouth. You don't know what happened there. My God. Seven barristers throwing questions at us nonstop. I attempted to commit suicide. There's the woman who saved me from committing suicide on my way down from Dublin after spending five days at the commission. Five days I spent at the commission. They brought a man over from Rome, 90 odd years of age, to tell me I was telling lies that I wasn't beaten for an hour, non-stop, by two of them. By two of them, non-stop, from head to toe without a shred of cloth on my body. My God, Minister, that woman will tell you how many times I jump out of the bed at night with the sweat pumping out of me because I see these fellas at the end of the bed 
with her fingers doing that to me and pulling me uh, into the room to rape me, to bugger me and bait the shite out of me. I'm saying zero tolerance prospectively. Everybody's on the same page. If this ever happens again, that's it. Every bishop is the ruler of his own diocese and reports only directly to the Pope. And so every bishop was following his own policy. Some were more proactive, some were completely negligent, and some were criminal in that they were covering up known abusers and failing to report them to law enforcement. We have to come to a standard not of zero tolerance, but a standard of forgiveness. Here's what uh, one bishop told uh, the Guardian newspaper. Politicians can change the law, but we can't change the nature of the confessional, which is a sacred encounter between a penitent and someone seeking forgiveness and a priest representing Christ. It doesn't affect us. Basically, they're saying they won't follow the law. They don't follow the law. They rape children. It's against the law to rape children. They don't care about our laws. They care about canon laws. The Holy See will be following very closely uh, to discover how this tragedy took place, these tragic events, and to ensure that uh, measures are taken that, to ensure that it will never reoccur again. The Vatican says that it will now, it has for some time said, it will cooperate with local authorities, meaning that they will turn over uh, accused abusive priests and so on to local authorities for prosecution. Victims and uh, their families want the Vatican to be held more accountable. The Vatican says that it will be in the future. And the Pope condemned the atrocities suffered by at least a thousand minors at the hands of more than 300 clergy members over 70 years. But the Pope stopped short of offering concrete steps to remove abusive priests or sanction those who took part in cover-ups. Does the church's response give you any faith? No, it's the same old response. The Pope didn't tell us who the 30 names are in the redacted report. You know, the Attorney General wants to tell us who the names are. He's dying to tell us who the names are and where they are and whose neighborhoods that they're in and whose children that they're around. But he's forbidden because the lobbyists and mm -hmm. the people that pay for the church's bills, the people that pay these lobbyists and these law firms, were successful at getting them to redact it. And they're successful at getting legislation squashed down in the Republican held Senate. Vieni, vieni, vieni da me. Vieni. Vieni. So you saw it for yourself. You saw it for yourself. No one can accuse or bring down the Roman Catholic Church. And you blacks and Latinos, nobody gives a damn about our people. There's nothing we can say or do. Watch this. You know what, as a matter of fact, where is the SPLC in terms of calling the Roman Catholic Church a hate group? They're destroying children. Heidi Byrick is leader of the Intelligence Project here at the Southern Poverty Law Center, a nonprofit anti-terror organization. She shows us memorabilia revealing some Ku Klux Klan history, boots with swastikas and boots with red laces, indicating Klan members who physically harmed someone and other racist paraphernalia. In 2014, there were some 784 active hate groups. Byrick brings us up to date. We have seen a sustained rise in hate groups since basically 2000. And the main thing driving this has been changing demographics in the United States. 2000 was an important year because it's the first time that the U.S. Census said definitively in our near future, 2042 at the time, whites will no longer be the majority. And obviously if you're a member of a hate group, right, if you're a white supremacist, the fact that whites will be less than 50 percent of the population is something to basically uh, be a little freaked out about. And so we started seeing organizing by hate groups and huge growth spiked over a thousand hate groups in a very short period of time. Obama added to that, right? Obviously the first black president was another reason for a backlash like that to develop. Is it mostly hatred of African Americans or is there more to it? Hatred of black people is the driving force for America's hate movement. But over the years, as you've seen a change in sort of the population of people of color here, you can add to that mix dislike of Latinos and immigrants dislike of gay people, and very recently we've seen a huge outburst 
by every kind of hate group against the Muslim community. You've also described in some of your writings about a new phenomenon called the lone wolf, which is different from organized groups. How significant and worrisome is that? Well, you're pointing out one of the biggest trends in terms of racist killings that we've, we're seeing lately. We have people like Dylan Roof, who killed nine people in Charleston. Our understanding of Dylan Roof from his own manifesto is he never met a person in another hate group in his life. He was completely radicalized online. That's exactly the same phenomenon that we see, for example, with people who are inspired by ISIS. They go onto websites where this propaganda is widely available, it enrages them for some reason. That kind of lone wolf terrorism is a big problem and there's more of it today than there was 10 years ago and we don't expect that to change. Can you use any of the tactics that you use to De decimate the Klan in this new era. What we try to do here is publish information about these people, where they are, what groups they're involved in, what they're publishing, so that at least law enforcement, which is the big readership for our, our products, knows where they are, what they believe, what they think, so they have a chance to maybe catch someone before they escalate. What we try to do is bust up the groups. We try to sow discord among the organizations, show that the people who lead these organizations are hypocrites, and so on to give people a chance to look at what they've gotten involved in and maybe reconsider it. And you've seen that work? It absolutely works. The number one thing I would say that drives people out of hate groups is seeing their leadership corrupt. But notice the SPLC will never speak or condemn the Roman Catholic Church, but let you or me do anything or say anything they don't like. Hate group, you're a cult. You're filled with hate. We got to bring them down. We must bring them. All you Edomites are going to fall. And you black people that join with the SPLC and the Catholic Church, you all going to hell together. And when I say hell, I'm referring to the lake of fire. You all going to be ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Understand that. Back to Revelation 17, 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. How is the blood of the saints in this woman, the mother of harlots? She has slaughtered, she has killed, she has molested the Israelites. She have issued papal bulls. Now let's get into these papal bulls, okay? Let's watch this video, this 30, this short video. Says that she's a persecuting power and martyred the saints. We read in verse uh, six, it said that she's drunken with the blood of the saints. And so um, the Catholic Church freely admits that they persecuted. And during the period of the Dark Ages, especially during the Spanish Inquisition, estimates range anywhere from 20 to 50 million Christians and Jews or anyone branded a heretic was killed by the church, burned at the stake, buried alive, drowned, you name it. And uh, it's just, it's a shocking history. You see how the, even the white man understands that the Roman Catholic Church did much evil during the time of the Spanish Inquisition. Now let's talk about those papal bulls, which are edicts or public decrees. Watch this. Papal bulls. Now I'm using Isaiah 10 for these papal bulls, but it also goes with the constitution. That's right. It also goes with um, the, what do you call it? Executive orders that the presidents put out, like when they made Judaism a race. President Donald Trump has regularly boasted of his pro-Israel record. He did it again as he signed a new executive order, this time aimed at fighting what the White House sees as a growing problem of anti-Semitism on university campuses across the U.S. This is our message to universities. If you want to accept the tremendous amount of federal dollars that you get every year, you must reject anti-Semitism. It's very simple. Essentially, the order extends part of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. It allowed the Department of Education to withhold federal funding from any college that discriminates on the grounds of race, color, or national origin. That now is extended to a religion, and critics say that effectively suggests Jews are a people who share the same race or collective national origin. That's a, a decree. Isaiah 10 verse 1, 
Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that write grievousness which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy, the Israelites, to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. So, and to take away the right from the poor of my people. Right now, I got to always go through this. Matthew 2 and 6, who is my people? Because you Christians, you make God sick with your lies. Anybody is the people of God. The devil is a liar. And so is you. Matthew 2 verse 6. And thou Bethlehem and the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. My people Israel. The Israelites is God's people and there are 12 tribes scattered worldwide. 12 tribes worldwide. So back to the papal bulls. There was a papal bull called uh, Dumb Diversus by Pope Nicholas V. He wrote it in 1452. I'm going to get it. I'm going to read it. 1452, papal bull, Dumb Diversus. The one, Dumb Diversus, the two, Romanus Pontifex, and the third, Inter Seatera Papal Bulls, serve as the basis and justification for the A, Doctrine of Discovery, which allowed for the genocide and eradication of merciless savages, the B, Global Slave Trade of the 15th and 16th centuries, which led to the American slave trade and the C, United States government's westward expansionism and the age of imperialism. These papal bulls provided the foundation for the justification of the removal of Caddo and Cherokee Indians from the Tyler Smith CO area, inspired by the transatlantic slave trade, which led to the dreams of a perpetual slave economy in a new southern empire and also fueled illegal settlements and war, which led to the colonization of lands west of Louisiana. So you had three main ones. You had the papal bull called Dumb Diversus by Pope Nicholas V in 1452. You had the papal bull Romanus Pontifex, by Pope Nicholas V again, to King Alfonso V of Portugal. It was a follow-up to the Dum Diversus uh, Papal Bull. This one was written in 1454. And then you had the Papal Bull called Inter Seatera, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it was by Pope Alexander VI of Rome to, Ferdinand and Is to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain in 1493. These papal bulls gave them power, the white man power over Africa and, and the newfound world of the Americas. Okay, now let's talk about slavery. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. You want to talk about Christianity. Deuteronomy 28. This is a curse that came upon the 12 tribes of Israel. Deuteronomy 28, I'm going to read verse 15, then I'm going to jump down. Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 reads, this is Moses on the continent of Africa speaking to the black 12 tribes of Israel, black and brown, 12 tribes of Israel. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake thee. Let's read some of the curses which is fulfilled with those three papal bulls that I mentioned. Dumb Diversus, um, Pont uh, Romanus Pontifex, and what was the other one? Uh, Inter Cetera, those three. So let's jump down to verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. What does that, those three things mean? Your enemies will control the imports and exports of food. That's what the hunger makes reference to. 
What does it mean by thirst? Your enemies will control the imports and exporting of water. And in nakedness, your enemies will control the raw textiles of clothing. And in want of all things, if you want anything, if you want education or understanding about religion, you would have to go to your enemies, these Edomites. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So under those three papal bulls, Dum Diversus, uh, Romanus Pontifex, and Inter Satira, the white man was given power to enslave us with shackles of iron on our necks, on our arms, on our legs. They overcame us like we read earlier today in Romans 13, verse 7 and 8. They overcame us and enslaved us. Let's read on. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the, end, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. What was that nation? Portugal and Spain. They, they, they sounded off. Those two countries started with Portugal, followed up by Spain. And then guess what? America took over all of it. So you can't excuse America in nothing. Let's read it again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. What language did they speak? They spoke Portuguese and Spanish. And no, you Latin Americans, you didn't speak no daggone Spanish. You didn't go, mira, mira, como esta, mi amigo. You's a liar, you lying Latinos. Verse 50, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. I hope y'all see that thing. I'm going to jump down. Verse 64, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even would and stone. So today, because I'm talking about the Pope, Roman Catholic Church, I'm going to keep it there. So when they sent us from country to country, state to state, they forced us to become Catholic Christians, Protestant Christians, and we had to worship the white man as God, as Christ, the angels. We had to accept that the Jews were white. We had to forget our identities. They changed our nationalities. That's what verse 37, let me jump back for you. Hmm. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Meaning we would lose our identities. We would no longer be called Israelites, no longer be called Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, so forth and so on. Verse 68 now. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, meaning slavery again, with ships. So how did we get from Africa to the Americas? With ships. Under what? Under those papal bulls. They gave them Portugal and Spain the authority to enslave us on the west coast of Africa and beyond. Take us to the Americas. Under what? Those papal bulls. Dumb diversus. Uh, Romanus Pontifex and Inter Cetera. 1452, 1454, 1493. That's the transatlantic slave trade for you. Verse 68 again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt, which means slavery, again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there, when you get off the ships, Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Who are we sold to? We were, we were sold not only to Catholic Christians, but to Protestant Christians, white folks. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. For bondmen, which means slave men, and bond women, which means slave women. And no man shall buy you, meaning no man shall redeem us from the curses God put on us for breaking his commandments. 
there was nothing we could do. Nothing at all. I hope you all understand that. I hope you all understand that. So I, I mentioned you Protestants because you like to think, oh, I'm absolved. Mm -mm. No, you're not. You better check the article called The White Protestant Roots of American Racism. You, what the Roman Catholic Church started, you Protestant Christians continued. You're not absolved from nothing. You, you, I hope you apologists hear that too. Listen good. Listen good. All right. So. Back to the Roman Catholic Church, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The doctrines of devils, one of the main ones is Christianity, beginning, beginning with the Roman Catholic Church. It's going to explain it, the next verse. Speaking lies and him. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, because they all have the Bible. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. What does that mean? You have an iron on your clothes, and the phone rings, and you happen to leave the iron face down on your clothing, and you run to get the phone. Then you're talking, blah, 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 blah. Then you come back, and oh, shoot, I forgot I left the iron there. And you notice the iron brand is branded into your clothing. Can you clean that out of there? No, it's good for nothing. You got to throw it away. So what is this saying? Some people in the Roman Catholic Church, some people in Christianity, their conscience is seared with that doctrine of devils. They're no godly good. They can't be used by God any way, shape, form, or fashion. So they got to be thrown away. Just like that shirt or pants you had. Watch this, verse 3. Forbidding to marry. What religious institutions forbid men to marry? That's right. You guessed it. The Roman Catholic Church. They said, oh, no, you can't marry. Then they, then they set up so, quote unquote bishops. Remember what the Bible said in 1 Timothy 3 and 1? This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be, must be blameless. The husband of one Wife, the Catholic Church says, no, no, we don't accept that. No wife. And because you don't get married, that's a bee's nest of pedophilia. Let's read it again. First Timothy 4, 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. They say on Lent, you can't eat any kind of red meat. You can only eat fish. And forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. What is the truth, brothers and sisters? Read Psalms 119, verse 142, where it reads and explains the truth. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And thy law is is the truth. That's what Paul's talking about. That's what he's talking about. From there, let's go to Exodus 20 and verse 4. It reads, uh, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. You know what the Catholic Church says? We don't accept that. We're giving you a new Sabbath, the first day of the week. You know what Protestant Christians do? We accept what the Catholic Church says about the first day being the new Sabbath day. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. Did you forget what Christ said in Matthew 12 and 8? Well, let me get it. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. So Christ, the black Messiah, he's Lord of the Sabbath day, the seventh day Sabbath. You Christians say, no, we don't accept that. Hmm, okay. 
Watch this, Matthew 24. I'm showing you, I'm going back to the blasphemies of Christianity. Matthew 24, verse 4 and 5 reads, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Remember those three papal bulls? The Pope authored or authorized Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, to paint new images of God and Christ. And they authorized the Crusaders and the Conquistadors to go forth and conquer in the name of white man Jesus. That's what they did. And yes, we know his name is not Jesus. We know his name in the Hebrew. We, we call him Yahweh Shai. Others call him uh, Yehoshua or Yahshua. We don't have a problem with that, but we're going to read it as it is written so everyone understands what's being said. Okay, let's go from there. Matthew 23, watch this, verse 9. It reads, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. What does that mean? Does that mean you don't have an a earthly father? No, it's talking about calling no man your heavenly father. Does the Roman Catholic Church, what does the word Pope mean? Heavenly Father. So right now you Protestants and you so-called Jewish people are going, see, we're not guilty of that. We're not guilty of that. But you are, Blanche. But you are. And I'm going to explain it with the same verse here. Verse above it. Verse 8 for you so-called Jewish people. And be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ and all your brethren. Rabbi means master. Okay. Do you so-called Jewish people run around and say, uh, call me rabbi, rabbi, call me rabbi. Yes, you do. You're in guilt. You're guilty too. Watch this. Verse uh, 10. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. You Protestant Christians, did you force the black children of Israel to call you masters during the time of chattel slavery? Yes, you did, Blanche. Yes, you did. You're guilty too, you Protestants. See, you urban apologetics just shut the hell up and move out the way. This is men talking to other, this is men of God talking to Satan. So you urban apologists, skip to the loo, my darling. Sit, go to the back of the bus, sit down and listen. Because you don't know nothing. Quick to stand up on the side of your enemy. You stupid as hell. Let's get some more. Second Peter 2. Second Peter chapter 2, and I'm going to read verse 1 down. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Like what? Calling the Pope the Heavenly Father? Uh, calling so-called Jewish people rabbi? Calling Protestant whites masters? Just for example. Are there any other heresies? Yes. Saying that God the Father is a white man. Saying that God the Son is an Edomite, also a white man. Saying the angels are white. The Israelites are white. And enslaving us, the true 12 tribes of Israel. It says, even denying the Lord that bought them and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. You all denied the Lord, all of you, even you black ones. Because you say, you either say, Christ is white or you say color don't matter. You're denying the Lord. One black woman said Christ was rainbow colored. You need to be smacked. Simple as hell. You ever see a rainbow man walking the earth? Simple as hell. Verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Y'all remember what the truth is, right? Psalms 119 verse 142. And thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. So first, second Peter two and two again, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Don't keep the law. Don't keep the law. The Spanish inquisition, for example, was against anybody keeping the law of God. Kill them, crucify them, punish them. 
That's what y'all did to us. That's what y'all did to us. From Africa to the Americas. Well, actually, actually more this way. From the, from Portugal and Spain to Africa to the Americas. And you know what? It even goes beyond that. Because some of us that fled to Italy, some of us fled to Holland, London, Denmark, Amsterdam, Netherlands, y'all hunted us down. You inquired of us whether or not we were keeping God's laws. Your inquiries involved cruel punishments of torture and pain, burning and molestation and drowning. The big, the big payback is coming. All right. Verse 3, 2 Peter 2 and 3. And through covetousness shall they, shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Now, where are we going next? We're going to 1 John 2. 1 John 2, 18. Little children, it is the last time, meaning last days. And as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Antichrist means to be against Christ. The Christ of the Bible is a black man with hair like wool, white as snow. Hair like wool, white as snow. What is wool hair? Afro hair. You're against that. And his skin like it burned in the furnace. You can read that Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Christ is a black man. But every Catholic and every Protestant you reject that and you put up white images, Caucasian images. He's white, he's white, he's white, he's white, he's white, he's white. That's what you do. Okay. Verse 19. Uh, no, I want, I'm going to go from there. I'm going to Romans 9.13. Watch this. At the end of the day, brothers and sisters, regardless of your, your, your internal fighting, of, well, uh, one group is Catholic, one group is Protestant. You're all the same. All you Caucasians, you're Edomites. I know that. The Bible teaches that. And all of you are going down. Romans 9, 13. Watch what God says. It says, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. God hates Esau and all his descendants. I'm going to show you a clip from a old book written in the 1800s, and they will verify who Esau is then and now and show you that the white man throughout Europe, they're not Japhetic like some of you foolish yayas like to say. And the reason you say that is because you secretly love white folks. You want to save them. Listen, you're not saving not near one of them. Let's watch the clip. All right. Modern Judaism, or a brief account of the opinions, traditions, rites, and ceremonies of the Jews in modern times by John Allen. This was printed in 1830. 1830. All right. Let's go to page... 231. I want you to pay close attention, all of you, regarding Esau. Now, this, this is going to clear up what the Yahyas try to teach about Esau being Jeff, Japhetic. Okay? Esau took the lands of Japhet. I need all you Yah, I call y'all Yahyas because y'all are a very disorganized uh, group of people. All right? In terms of your understanding. So let's start here. Esau's descendants. I'm going to jump down just for a lack of time. First, let me just zoom in. First, that the descendants of Esau, the sworn enemies of the descendants of Jacob, even to the end of the world. So the scholars, understand what I'm about to say. The scholars know that the descendants of Esau, Esau are the sworn enemies of the descendants of Jacob, the Israelites, even to the end of the world. All right, let's get down to the point. 
All right. I'm going to just jump down. Ah, what's the start here? Spread. Spread their colonies far and wide. Talking about Esau. Spread their colonies far and wide. Subjugated Italy. Founded Rome and the Roman Empire. Who subjugated Italy, founded Rome and the Roman Empire? I know you're slow, so let's start back up here again. Esau's descendants. The descendants of Esau. That's good. Subjugated Italy, founded Rome and the Roman Empire. A length entirely overturned the Jewish state. That's us. Which had been restored after the termination of the Babylonian captivity. That was during Persian media's time. The second temple being destroyed by Titus Vespasian. And that in the present day, watch this, listen good, and that in the present day, professing the religion of Jesus of Nazareth, which they were the first of all nations to embrace. So what is this talking about? The white man, Esau, took the teachings of Christ, perverted it, and that's why they call it Christianity, or some of you like to say the Roman Catholic Church. Let's read that part again. And that in the present day, professing the religion of Jesus of Nazareth, which they were the first of all nations to embrace, they, meaning Esau's descendants, they hold the dominion over all Europe. You see that? Esau holds the dominion over all Europe, not Japheth, brothers and sisters, not Japheth, Esau. Then it says, Esau detaining in captivity his brother Jacob. So it says Esau would still have in captivity, his brother Jacob. Who's in captivity today? Think about it. The 12 tribes of Israel, you so-called blacks and Latinos. Then it says, watch this, at least as far as regards the tribe of Judah, meaning they're stressing on Judah, till his Messiah, Ben David, son, Ben means son of, son of David shall appear, meaning Christ. Still talking about Esau. Now watch this. Secondly, that the prophecies of the prophets against Esau, Edom, Seir, and the cities of Edom. Especially those of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Obadiah have not yet received their full accomplishment. For that though the house of Esau has experienced some particular judgments of God, on account of the injuries at different periods of time inflicted upon the Israelites. Yet the final vengeance on account of that last and greatest injury, the destruction of the second temple by Titus and the transportation of the Jews into captivity in which they are still most appropriately detained. Meaning the Israelites are still in captivity today and is, and excuse me, is yet impending over to be executed in the time of the Messiah, that this is foretold by the prophets in all their denunciations of the severest plagues against the house of Esau, the cities of Edom and Mount Seir, which all belong to Rome and the Christians. Watch this. Hmm. And that the fate of Christians at the time, at, at that time, will be far more dreadful than that of Mohammedans, meaning Muslims. A Barbanel particularly said, the slaughter of the Turks in the future battle will not be so great as that of the Christians, for many of the Turks will escape according to Isaiah 66, verse 19. But of the Christians, talking about Esau, Obadiah says, there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. Wow. Okay. Let's get to the shout outs. This is from D. Foster. She wrote, Most High in Christ, bless you and your family and all IUIC commandment keepers. Please keep me on the prayer list, D. Foster. Yes, Sister Foster, we definitely will do that. I want to I, I thank you. All right. 
Um, this one is from Miss Vale. She writes, this is hers. She writes, all praises to the Most High. Thank you, Bishop, and all the deacons, captains, and soldiers for the hard work of bringing out the truth. Before I came into the truth, I would pray and ask the Lord to give me the wisdom and understanding of the Bible. And all praises he did. And I am so thankful for knowing the truth. Thank you all for explaining the Bible in its actual context. Thank you all for your daily devotions of teaching us on how to right, rightfully live our lives. You all have and will always be, you all have and will always put in the hard work until our Lord comes. I just want to say thank you all again. Although I'm in the truth, I am struggling with smoking cigarettes and I know my body must be clear and not defiled in any means. Please pray for me of that and that the Lord will open up the hearts of family, especially my husband. I will continue to keep IOIC and the families in my prayer. Thank you, Miss Vail. We want to thank you, Miss Vail. We're going to keep you on a prayer list that the Lord will deliver you from the bondage, the addiction of harmful cigarettes. Because you know that nicotine that's in those cigarettes is an addicting uh, chemical in there and it binds you to it. So let's pray and fast, Sister Vail. All right. I also want to shout out and thank Sister Atara of California and Sister Phoebe of D.C. They sent my wife's uh, sister, my wife, Sister Shamara, some jewelry. So I want to thank you all. She thanks you all. So she told me to make sure I mention your names. I also want to thank Sister Paulette and Sister Valerie. They often give me many of the books I read come from them. Excuse me. They do the research for me. They highlight certain things and give me those books. So I definitely want to thank Sister Paulette and Valerie. Shout out to you too. All right. This is Sister Amina R. Amina R. She writes 12. She writes Tribe of Judah. She writes Shalom Bishop, praying that all is well with you and your family. Bishop, I would like to give a shout out to all the brothers and sisters in the making of the video, Country Kings, and that ain't me. Shout out to y'all. Also, Ben Zion in Nashville, where the kid rips up white Jesus pictures. Shout out to Ben Zion. Now, Country Kings, that's Officer uh, Gedaliah. Dang. Y'all know who you are. Okay, shout out to y'all. I love it when they get the chance to teach the young children because they are more open to the truth. They have not been corrupted as much by Christianity. Bishop, I give all praise to the Most High that you are bringing down the lies of these lying pastors. I pray that the truth bring them down to their knees. Shalom, Bishop. We pray that they, our people that's in these Christian lies fall on their knees, humble themselves, and ask the Lord for forgiveness. And repent, just like I did, just like many of our brothers and sisters did. All right, this is from Sister Diane. She writes, hello, Bishop. God bless all Israel united in Christ. Love your teachings, Diane C. All praises. Thank you, Diane. This, wait, this is, wait. This is three letters. Mm. Three pages. Okay. This is from Sister Hadassah Bat Israel. Annie, Sister Annie. That's your Greek name. Now, I ain't reading all of this. I am tired. I'll read some of it, though, and I'll read the rest later. It's shout out to, well, I'll put it up on the screen so y'all can see it. It's just so long. I am tired. I'm exhausted. I'm sitting here drinking, sipping on tea, ginger tea, by the way. Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ. Bless. I pray you're in good health. I'm trying to be uh, and your family and IUSC leadership as well. I pray to the Most High for he is worthy of all praises, all honor and all glory for his mercy endureth forever. This is my third shout out Tuesday letter. I love you, Bishop, and the IUSC leadership. Oh. Don't think I'm reading all three pages right now. <laughs> Woo! Um, 
and the good work that the Most High is doing in your life and gathering the 12 tribes worldwide. I have no doubt that the kingdom of heaven is soon to come. We are in the last days. Yes, we are. I've never seen a day like today in my 22 years of age. Now, now let's say 22 or 72. Some of you sisters, y'all got this funny writing. It might say 72 years. I don't know if y'all could get that on the screen. I don't know. Y'all let me know. Can y'all see that? 72. Okay. Okay, 72. I've never seen a day like today in my 72 years of age. It's like the Bible says in Matthew 24. There shall be wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, floods. Now you have fires in California and Colorado. Pestilences. I never knew what it was until now. Famines, shortages of food. Put, putting a limit on what you can buy. Sisters, stop pigeon shopping. <laughs> Over. But I know that the Most High will take care of us, us, his people that keep his laws. I ask that you keep me in your prayers and all our people that are afflicted in our bodies. Yes, I have a heart problem. Yes, okay, sis. The doctor says it's heart failure. Definitely going to keep you in prayer. You, you send me your number. I'm going to make sure we reach out to you. Please keep me in your prayers on the prayer list. I'm sending my donations. Bishop, over 15 years ago or more, I stopped going to church when I saw it wasn't right. I sat at my kitchen table and said I wasn't going back. So I left the Christian church. I had my Bible on the table and I said, Lord, what do you want me to read? So I, I, so I stood the Bible up. And it opened to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Wow. It said, I will send you into Egypt again with ships. I said to myself, the only one that owns ships is white people. <laughs> and I closed the book and read no further. The Lord be giving me hints of his word, but I wasn't picking up on it. But he continued to work with me. All praises to the most high. I'm sorry for the long letter. I said I wasn't going to read it, but sister, you got me hooked on it. I want to join a booster club also, but I'm not computer savvy, so I'll have to get one of the sisters to help me. Sincerely, Sister Hadassah Bat Israel, Greek name, Annie. Annie, love you, Sister Annie. All praises to the Lord. All praises. Now, I don't want to mix up the letters. Hmm, I read this prayer list. All right, this one. This is a two-page letter, and it's in script. And I know I'm going to have trouble reading it. I'm a, I'll start. It says, who's, who wrote this? Juline D. Juline D. Now, your last name is Creole or French. Juline, Juline, I'm not sure if that's male or female. I think it's female. I think it's female. Juline. Holy greetings. To Bishop Nathaniel, there are no words to express how happy, grateful, thankful, and joyful I am to know that I am an Israelite, not Haitian lady. <laughs> First, thanks to the Most High and the Black Messiah who loved me that much. Thanks to you, Bishop Nathaniel, for what you have done through the lives of the young adults and old men and women. Bishop Nathaniel, after the Black Messiah, you are a great teacher who teaches the students truly, faithfully, and passionately the words of the Most High. May 19th, 2020, I was searching for Shalom on YouTube. I could not find it. What popped up is the Israelites. I said, wow, that is nice. That's a nice title. Let me watch it. Oh, my Lord. Something came up from a Haitian young mouth whose name is Gideon. Shout out to Gideon. I was stunned. My sisters were there. I said to them, did you hear what he was saying? They replied, we need to watch them. Before I answered, this is my first watching. The officer Gideon said, we blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are Israelites. He mentioned Haitian people. I could not believe it myself. 
the 20th of May, 2020, I went to the computer and I typed, who are the true Hebrew Israelites? The answers I got made me speechless. Since that time, I'm obsessed. From the 19th of May till now, I'm watching IUIC and Sabbath classes. One book would not be enough. I write about my spiritual life until I know who I am now. I was so crazy to watch IUIC the 26th of May. I have sent blankety blank through PayPal. My spiritual my spiritual stores stories are long. Yes. But I know someday I will see you face to face to talk to you. Receive a check mm-hmm, to preach the true gospel to our forth preach the true gospel of our forefathers. Thanks a million for the wisdom the most high gave you. Say hi to my brothers and sisters and I you I see you. Bishop Nathaniel, I always laugh when you said, what the hell is this? All the deacons, the brothers, the teachers, street, uh, FCN, for Four Corners News Brothers, shout out to FCN, <laughs> are so funny. They make my days all the time. Thanks again. May the Most High continue to bless you, my brothers and sisters in IUIC. When you are reading the letter, do not mention my full name. I won't. You can say JD. Thank you. Okay, JD. I didn't read that till now, but okay, JD. All praises, all praises, all praises. Let's put that there. All right. It says, um, this is from... Now, you didn't put your name on this one. So I'm just going to read it. Oh, you did. Shalom, Bishop, and leadership, and all Israel, and Mosai and Christ bless. Brother Drew, back again to drop a little support. If you can pray for a brother, may the Most High allow y'all to keep up the good work in keeping it short. Shalom. Thank you. All praises. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for keeping it short. Now, I, I broke my little rule about not reading long letters. I ain't going to do that no more again. <sighs> so let's give a shout out to um, Michael H. All praises, Michael H. Thank you so much. Let's give a shout out to L. Vale. Shout out to you. Shout out to Lawrence, middle initial B, last initial J. Shout out to you. Let's give a shout out to Stephen B. Stephen B, thank you so much. Let's give a shout out to Amina R. Thank you, Amina. Shout out to Diane C. Shout out to Diane. Now, I do want to say this. Don't make your money orders or checks out to the Booster Club. Make it out to IUIC and put in parentheses or at the bottom, Booster Club donation. Put it, put it like that, okay? If it's for the Booster Club, I'll know. And I, I'll make sure it's put where it's supposed to be, okay? I want to give a shout out to Charles L. Thank you, Charles. I want to give a shout out to Ann S. Thank you, Annie. Annie S. Thank you. I want to give a shout out to... Jacqueline M. Thank you, Jacqueline. I want to give a shout out to Reginald C. Thank you, Reginald. Shout out to JD. Remember you said call you JD. So JD, thank you. We got that thing right there. Thank you. All praises. Shout out to Brother Drew. Thank you, Brother Drew. Shout out to C. Kemp. That's Brother C. Kemp. All right. Shout out to T. Hawkins, shout out to you. Shout out to Jerrion, last initial V. Shout out to Elisheba I of Florida. Thank you. All praises. Shout out to D. Foster. Shout out to you. Shout out to Linwood, middle initial H, last initial B. And last but not least, let's give a shout out to Pelalila I. All praises to the Lord, brothers and sisters. We're in that time. You know what time it is. The winter is here. So let's all of us stay healthy. Let's stay faithful. Let's stay focused. But most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ bless you all. Love you. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC, 
has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.